if I don't see something happening or find a solution that I think needs to exist, then I try and go out and do it. I'm proud of what my father did. I'm proud of what my grandfather did. I've never felt like I needed to fill their footsteps because that's impossible. But I've always chosen to look at that as a, as a positive empowering responsibility. Obviously, I grew up with my grandfather and father's films, which doesn't necessarily make one a filmmaker. It was really just doing it myself. I wanted to create a documentary about the water issues facing the Everglades. So I raised like 13 grand. I hosted it, I wrote it. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. We were nominated for a bunch of education awards and it worked out really well. Animal Planet got their hands on that through a mutual friend, and they offered me the opportunity to co-host Ocean's Deadliest with Steve Irwin. That was the expedition that he had his accident. I decided, along with my sister, that we wanted to start a nonprofit organization in honor of our father, and that's what has since over the last years morphed into what it is now, Earth Echo International. International education ratings, the United States is ranked somewhere like 29th in science, 24th in math in the world. Earth Echo's mission is to empower young people and to really build the movement, to help science education come alive in the classroom. Not only do fossil fuels and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere cause greenhouse effect, it also makes the oceans more acidic. So you what saw we do is we provide resources to educators to be able to take kids out into their community to understand that they have power to make their communities better, to solve environmental problems in their communities. I have a production company that I executive produce or co-produce a lot of the documentaries or films that I work on. My wife and I run that production company and we, um, we're launching a series of documentaries coming up here. Join us, Ashlyn and Philippe Cousteau, as we set out on an epic adventure to learn the truth about wild orcas as they fight for their food, their family, and the very survival of their species. Any notes, Pete? I think we can just try a version where, where you're a little kind of serious on the end, like, is it too late? Like, is this, is it over? I think most of everything I've done, I've, I've just picked up through the School of Hard Knocks. I have a master's degree in history, which is useful to understand the human condition, but it didn't formally prepare me for, you know, filmmaking or for you know, running a nonprofit or for business or anything like that. I've picked up all that along the way. How's it going, guys? What's up, man? This place has been here since my mother and father lived here. Apparently my mother would always make my dad put his cheese out on the little porch they had in their apartment in Paris because it smelled so bad. And he'd always bring it on an airplane with him to eat as a snack and they'd be, and my mother would be so embarrassed and people would just be like, what is that horror? What died on this airplane? And my mother would be sitting there going, oh my God. We say aromatic. Aromatic, yes. <laughs> That's a more appropriate way to say it than aromatic, yeah. It's pretty cool when people come up to you and say what your family stands for and, and what your grandfather and father and what you do inspires me to want to make the world a better place. That's just a wonderful feeling, and, and, and uh, that's why I do what I do. Okay. Which one is this? This is A002. Oh, oh my god. Here we're going. This will probably have to be color corrected. Every day is hard running a nonprofit, which is why I've oftentimes turned to looking at innovative business models to drive resources to solve these problems. The investment fund that we launched on Wall Street, the Global Echo Fund, our ticker symbol is GIVE, G-I-V-E. A portion of the uh, management fee of that fund goes into a charitable foundation. We're kind of the leading edge of this new wave of impact investing that's starting to change the way people think about their money. They may be doing a lot of really good things for the planet. And if you ask them to look at their portfolio, in many cases, they don't even realize that they're funding the very organizations, companies, or actions that they're fighting on the other side of the ledger. Over time, as my thinking has evolved and the world has evolved and the issues have evolved, I've continually looked for different ways to inspire people and to educate people. They sometimes may seem disparate, but they're all united by a common vision, and that's to help people recognize the power they have to change the world.